Oh, oh, you know what that means. Got a box to open up. Hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It is toasty, to say the least. It's like 99 degrees. Because of that, have to have this thing on. I know it's going to get annoying. I'm sorry, but if I don't have that blasting on the fan up, or on the camera, which is going to be over here on the tripod, then the video just won't happen. So that's what's going on with the background noise. I have a box here full of some hardy palms that I am pretty excited about. I said that like a question because, well, I have questions. There's a box cutter right here, right here. I went inside and spent five minutes trying to find that other one. It's right there the whole time. Good to know. These are just little, they're babies, but I thought y'all might want to see what's in there so we can talk about it. I know some of y'all are hardy palm enthusiasts, right? I'm going to read off the description before I unbox them just because well, this thing keeps overheating and the fan only has so much battery left in it. So I'm gonna read this straight from the website. These plants are from Brian's Botanicals. So that's, the, that's where this is all coming from. And I'll put it up there on the screen. It's gonna take me a minute to get through it because there's a lot of typos in here. This is Sable Miner, Knoxville. Sable Miner, Knoxville. This clone of Sable Miner was brought to me by a good friend, Todd Blitzer, who has been growing hardy palms in Kentucky for years. He said he acquired this palm while in Knoxville, Tennessee from a nursery called Bear Creek Nursery. He was able to get the last palm they had to offer when he had visited, with a question mark, okay. It seems this clone has been growing in the area for some time and has shown to be very hard. <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm talking about. It's so hard to get through these descriptions sometimes. Friend Todd told me that he had Sable Miner Knoxville in the same garden as the other palms like Sable Miner McCurtain, Sable Miner Louisiana, the question mark. After almost 25 years of growing them out, he said by far the Sable Miner Knoxville was the hardiest in his garden. The other varieties would suffer severe damage or defoliating while Sable Miner Knoxville had no damage. He told me he had a nice plant out during our record-breaking winter vortex years ago that killed many native and hardy plants. It was reported at minus 40 wind chill and that it showed little to no leaf burn. I believe the record low was minus 22 Fahrenheit that year. I am not sure the damage which I am sure it had to get from the, what? <sighs> does this thing say? I'm not sure the damage which I am sure it had to get from that cold but Todd said now protection in 25 years that is unheard of for any sables I have grown. Thinking that was supposed to be no protection for 25 years assuming. I've been waiting for years to get seeds from this clone and last season he came by with a large bag of seeds for me to try and sell. So I'm looking forward to growing these out and testing them myself in the garden. He said they have done great in dry and shaded areas of his garden right next to his large pond with wet roots. So a really tough durable plant. Don't know if that question mark's intentional. Maybe one of, if not, the hardiest sable miner forms available. Hardy zone 6A, question mark. I think, I think that question mark was intentional. I had to add in a lot of my own words there to get through that so that it would make some more sense. I wanted to get that out of the way because it was gonna be very painful. I'm at the five minute mark. It took me five minutes to read that off. Sable miners, they're fun. They're exciting. It's just fun, big fronds. And there are lots of different types, seed forms that you can try out for your area. There are some that are hardy into warmer parts of zone five with protection and plenty for zone six and tons for zone seven. These are supposedly gonna be really hardy. Who knows? I don't, maybe his friend Todd has them planted in a spot that stays a little bit warmer. I, I don't know. That's always my thing whenever people talk about seed types of palms. You know, this was collected from a palm that survived minus 20 degrees for five days on end. I'm always like, okay, but what's, the location like what's going on over there is it near a path or a brick wall i mean even those things aren't going to make a tremendous difference in hardiness but it helps are they sheltered from the wind it sounds like this has been a clump that's been established for a pretty long time so hopefully they're gonna be pretty good wow. i'm gonna get this cut open and talk about them some more so there are i believe six in here Something like that. This was a bit, not a bit. This was definitely an impulse buy. I was doing a video about some colocasias that I got from Brian's Botanical. And when I was editing the video, I did a screen recording of their description, like I probably did for this video as well. And underneath the suggested plants, this was there. And I read about it and I was like, oh, okay. Sounds cool. I'll order six of them. I've grown several types of the Sable Miners, the McCurtain. Okay, I had an Emerald Isle 
for two years. It got killed back by an ice storm. And uh, there, what was the other one? Oh, Louisiana. There's some debate about whether it's a minor or not. Seems like a minor to me. Uh, that's a back and forth thing. I don't care to get into the details with that sort of thing. The whole point there is there are a lot of different ones to choose from. They all come from different locations. Those different locations insinuate different levels of hardiness. At least that's what they say. And this is, yeah, this is what I expected. It's a minor seedling. It's, it's a palm seedling, right? There's not going to be much to it. I'm probably gonna need to grow these out for a year or two before I stick them in the ground. Although if the hardiness that they're saying that they have, maybe I could try a couple in the ground and keep the others potted up and wait a few years. I'm gonna unbox the rest, set them down, give them a drink. Maybe pot them, not today, it's too hot to pot them up. They look like your typical palmetto seedlings or even just palm seedlings. They all have a very distinct look to them, right? Just those strappy grass leaves. Not much to look at just yet, but in several years, they should start putting out some mature fronds. That's the thing with Sable Minor and Sable Palmetto. I also realize I didn't really give any background on these plants to begin with, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Sable Minor is a group of plants in the Sable family. You may know Sable from the Sable Palmettos, which is the native trunked palm that occurs all over the southeast and uh, middle south. I was going to say southwest, but not really. But I'm sure that they're probably, there's the text on it. They're all over the place down south. How about that? The uh, Sable Minor, not Sable Palmetto, but Sable Minor is in more of an understory type palm. So it's just big fronds that are just fan-shaped leaves. You usually have a split down the middle, which is how you tell them apart from the palmettos when they're smaller. And they have a subterranean trunk. They are much, much, much more cold hardy. I would consider Sable Miners to be as hardy. They, I don't know, okay. they rival the needle palms, which are these guys over here, past the gorilla cart, those things. Those are needle palms. So you get it, minor, because little, I, I think. So from reading that description, the reason I was drawn to these one, because they sound like they're extremely tough. Hopefully they are. I wish that something had been mentioned about their growth rate, because that is something that really is important when talking about sable miners. I mentioned other varieties like the McCurtain, the Emerald Isle, which are beautiful. Emerald Isle gets very large. It's a big sable miner, but they only grow a few leaves a year. So if you have a bad winter, you're not gonna get a nice big lush plant for a few more years after that. And the McCurtain, very hardy sable miner, stays smaller-ish compared to like the Emerald Isle at least. These plants are generally spoken about as forms, right? Not a variety, not a cultivar, but a form. So that means that it is from a location where there was something unique about them that drew people to want to take the seeds and grow them. Usually what's unique about them for us cold hardy palm nerds is where they were grown, what type of conditions they've survived. And sometimes it's just about the size, like the Blounston's dwarf. I don't know if I'm saying that word right, Blounston, I don't know. It's an area in Florida where there's some sable miners that only get about 18 inches tall. So they're better for smaller gardens. Don't get as big and they just have a nice cute little tidy form. And, and I did say that they have subterranean trunks. It's because they do. It's probably one of the things that attributes so much to their cold hardiness. They're generally found in shady areas, somewhat swampy, sometimes in the swamps, the further south you go, but they like a more wet environment. They are versatile though. I have been growing sable miners in my garden without wet feet for years, as do most people who grow them in their garden. Most people don't provide a swamp situation for them, especially if you're growing them north of 7B, probably. If you're dropping below 10 during the winter time, then there are some things you have to watch out for. I protect mine when it drops below 10 degrees, That's or if there's ice. And that's just because they grow so slowly that to me it's not worth it to see how they do, see if they're gonna sail through that cold spell where it might be down to negative five or negative 10. I already know they're gonna defoliate. So why would I put them through that? I just throw some lights around them, a couple of frost bags. Usually that does the trick. This winter we had that negative 12 for like, I don't know, negative 12, negative 10 for nearly two weeks. And they defoliated by like, I'd say 50% maybe. So there's only so much you can do, right? And that's why with these, I'm probably not gonna stick them in the ground this year. They're just tiny little babies. 
and the smaller they are, the more prone they are to shock when you disturb their roots and you transplant them as well. So I will be growing these out for probably maybe two years before I put them in the ground, at least the majority of them in the ground. I, may, I might go ahead and just stick a couple in the ground and see what happens because I'm curious. I've got an abundance of them to play around with here, but I will keep at least four of them for a few years in their containers. I will more than likely be waiting until they're starting to look like they're gonna push out some mature fronds and the roots feel like they're more solid on the inside. These are just, there's not much going on in these just yet. They're first year seedlings. This is exactly what you'd expect to see from any sable miner or even palmetto as a first year plant. And then the other thing that drew me to these, other than them just seeming like they're incredibly cold hardy, were the pictures. There are only a couple of them, but that was one dramatic split leaf <laughs> that was shown in those pictures and a little bit of above ground trunkage. And that can take a long time to show. It sounds like the person who's growing these has had them for a very, very, very long time though. So while I did say they have a subterranean trunk, sometimes over many, many, many years, they can develop an above ground trunk. It's not usually very much. It's usually very short and very chunky, pretty cool looking but nothing like you would get with an actual palmetto or any of the other trunked types of sables. Yeah, they seem cool. Just one of many different types of sable miners to try. Comment down below. Do you have some favorite forms or some that you're looking for that seem really interesting? Let us all know. Do you know more about this Knoxville, Tennessee type and its location or even some of the other interesting forms that are being reported all over the place in Tennessee? That's another thing with the sables. If you go onto a palm forum and people start talking about the native range, things get wild. The palm nerds come out and they let you know where they've been seeing them and then it turns into debates over whether or not that was something that had been planted or whether or not it was native or scattered about by some kind of animal from nearby. It's just, it gets interesting. All I'm saying there is that the maps that show the native range for sable miners are usually uh, pretty conservative in my opinion, from everything I read online from people who live in areas where they see them growing fairly far north or out of where you would expect them to be growing in seemingly a native manner. I don't know, but who's to say? Yeah, that's all. Fun plants. Keep everybody updated on what's going on with them <laughs> like once a year because they're sable miners. Don't expect to see much out of them for a pretty long time. All right, comment down below. Say hi. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.